So um, like Ian mentioned, I was a graduate student at the University of Pennsylvania. Um, and so the Falun Dafa Club and its events had been challenged multiple times throughout my time at Penn. But I'll just share two incidents of interference or pushback that the club faced that really stand out to me. Um, so the first one was in November of 2020 during our promotion of a virtual screening of a Falun Gong related human rights film um, titled Finding Courage. So shortly after we submitted the event details to GAPSA, the Graduate and Professional Student Assembly, um, their weekly newsletter, we were informed that some Chinese international students and alumni too, they had complained to GAPSA and Patch, the Pan-Asian American Community House about the event. And what I found really interesting about this complaint was that these students were upset that the Falun Dafa Club was allowed to advertise their events in the UPenn GAPSA newsletter. So it wasn't, you know, at the content of the film screening, it was that we had the right to, you know, advertise our student events in the, in the newsletter. And this was the first time that I realized, you know, that not only would the nature of our events that we held as a club be challenged, but sort of our privileges as students on campus would also be challenged simply because we were Falun Gong practitioners. And after some discussion, the air was sort of cleared, you know, that if Falun Dafa Club was a registered club on campus, which it was, then it indeed did have the right to advertise their events in this newsletter. And at this point, we were also connected with representatives from the CSSA, the Chinese Students and Scholars Association, to help clear any potential misunderstandings that could be, you know, perceived from our hosting this human rights film screening event. And it was also suggested that we perhaps work together on this event, to which they declined due to the political nature of the event. And then a few months later, um, the UPenn Falun Dafa Club also held a virtual film screening of In the Name of Confucius in collaboration with over 10 other Falun Dafa clubs across North America, as well as Students for a Free Tibet and Athena Institute. Um, so In the Name of Confucius is a documentary film that exposes the controversy over Confucius Institutes. Uh, University of Pennsylvania was offered a Confucius Institute contract and rejected that in 2009, which was a unanimous decision of the East Asian Studies faculty at the time. But just a few miles away from UPenn, however, Temple University did have an active Confucius Institute. And that same month, March of 2021, Tufts University closed its Confucius Institute and the United States Senate unanimously passed a bill to tighten control over Confucius Institutes across the country. So our organization was, you know, quite excited to host this very relevant film screening and discussion and present it to the UPenn student body. Um, our club also extended invitations to the university president, the provost, the CSSA, and the director of Temple University's Confucius Institute to join the film screening and discussion, you know, on this issue of academic freedom and then Confucius Institutes. Um, and at the time, I had also just joined the GAPSA executive board as executive vice president of programming. And in addition to newsletter advertisements, another service that GAPSA offers registered clubs on campus to advertise student events is social media posting, you know, on the official GAPSA social media channels. And given that the subject matter of the film was particularly relevant at that time, and then also to the UPenn community and also had to do with academic freedom in general, I suggested that our club submit this specific event for GAPSA social media promotion to reach a broader audience. And the event was published in the weekly newsletter and then on their social media channels. And the backlash from this was almost immediate, you know, with comments and emails flooding in for almost two months straight, even after the event itself had happened. And again, what I found really interesting and, you know, surprising to say the very least were that most, if not all complaints centered around a few arguments. So the first argument was that it was inappropriate for GAPSA to advertise an event hosted by the Falun Dafa Club because choosing to advertise the Falun Dafa Club's event was in fact political propaganda offensive to Chinese students. Two, Falun Dafa Club, Students for a Free Tibet and Athena Institute are specifically anti-China groups with the sole purpose of criticizing China and provoking negative sentiment towards China and Chinese people. Three, that promoting the film screening was promoting hatred directed towards Asian people and specifically Chinese people. And then four, that the content of the film screening and discussion were racist. 
And this was, you know, quite a stressful and traumatic time for me and for our club members because pretty much all of the public comments on the social media posts had nothing to do with the film screening itself and were instead just personal attacks about the Falun Dafa Club and Falun Gong practitioners. You know, we were called disgusting Chinese terrorists and many comments expressed that Gapsa and Penn should be ashamed that they had stooped so low as to allow a Falun Dafa Club to exist on campus. Um, and again, this film screening was not hosted by GAPSA. You know, the Falun Dafa Club had simply utilized a service that's provided by the Graduate Student Assembly offered to all registered clubs on campus. But even after the event had occurred, these complaints continued. You know, Chinese students were still emailing and essentially pressuring GAPSA to be held accountable for the apparent anti-Chinese propaganda it had promoted for its promotion of anti-Chinese hate, and then also to ensure that something like this would not happen again. There was even an open letter slash petition that was started in protest to this um, film screening event. And the requests in this letter were quite shocking to me. You know, over 70 Chinese international students signed this letter, which claimed that the nature of the documentary and the film screening were highly controversial and political, and then offended many Chinese students on campus because it was, quote, the only political propaganda GAPSA advertised in this whole year. Um, and so the letter stated that because GAPSA's decision to promote this event hosted by Falun Dafa Club, it had isolated and upset the Chinese population at Penn, that GAPSA should set future rules so that something like this would not happen again. It requested that any and all future promotions of events must be presented to the General Assembly and then unanimously voted upon. And then that if there were any students um, with concerns or oppositions to the, po the posts after they were published, that GAPSA should withdraw these posts um, and delete them, you know, take them down. And these requests were quite shocking to me because the CSSA is represented on GAPSA's board. There is, um, you know, a council member specifically representing the CSSA. So implementing this suggested policy would in fact marginalize Falun Gong practitioners on campus and essentially silence any promotion of Falun Gong club events in order not to upset the Chinese international population at Penn. And what was further shocking to me was that at a GAPSA General Assembly meeting and then also a GAPSA Council meeting after the film screening, a Chinese international student was allowed to present basically his side, his concerns about the film screening and the promotion of the event, during which he showed slides that were highly misrepresentative of the film screening and the discussion's apparent racism towards Chinese people. And he also presented a slide that echoed Chinese Communist Party rhetoric that is specifically used to justify the imprisonment, torture, and persecution of Falun Gong practitioners in China. So he used these slides as a justification as to why it was wrong for GAPSA to have promoted a Falun Dafa club event. Um, and then this same Chinese international student, among others, also accused me of conflict of interest and using my position on the GAPSA executive board to specifically promote political propaganda for my own personal reasons, because I was on both the GAPSA executive board and then also part of the Falun Dafa club. And at no point during any of this, you know, emails, meetings, presentations included, were Falun Gong club representatives invited or offered to join the discussion or given an opportunity to publicly respond to any of these claims. And, you know, this was a very difficult time for me and other club members because, you know, we're students first and foremost. We're balancing our schoolwork with the weight of all these personal attacks and pushback and essentially also feeling unable to join the conversation and speak our part. And honestly, despite all this that happened, I still feel like I'm one of the lucky ones because, you know, I felt that I could speak up safely if I was given the opportunity to. But a lot of Falun Gong practitioners or, you know, dissident student voices on university campuses are not so lucky. You know, during our hosting of the film screening of In the Name of Confucius, we had some host organization members specifically request not to be shown in any pictures related to the event or have their names published because one of their parents was still currently jailed in China for practicing Falun Gong. And then another student whose life dream was to visit Tibet. And they worried that being shown in relation to this event that they helped host on an American university campus would put them or their family members physically in mainland China in jeopardy. And, you know, I don't have any relatives who practice Falun Dafa that are physically in mainland China. And in general, I don't feel like I have to worry about the safety of myself or my family if I speak out against the persecution or publicly choose to take part in a club event, you know, in the United States. But even so, around this time, you know, with all these personal attacks and pushback, my parents were quite worried for my safety and they sort of 
you know, warned me to be careful because I was outspoken and active in the Falun Dafa Club, and I often publicly associated myself with Falun Gong activism. Um, so just to finish my portion here, I'll just highlight a few closing thoughts about my, my experience. I think through this whole process, one thing that I do appreciate <clears throat> is that the Office of Student Affairs sort of did step in to help steer the conversation in the right direction. And what I mean by that was that, you know, the Falun Dafa Club's right to hold space on campus and right to open expression um, was being challenged. It had been challenged in the past and it was being challenged again. And appropriate administration did step in to make it clear, you know, that complaints about the Falun Dafa Club's presence on campus and right to promote its events through GAPSA were not the same as concerns about the event itself. You know, they were two completely separate issues, must be addressed separately and by the appropriate people. And it was also made clear, you know, that the event did not violate university policies or the code of conduct. And so therefore the club had not done anything wrong just because some Chinese international students were offended by the promotion of this event. But I think overall, you know, more needs to be done to proactively support, you know, the free expression of Falun Dafa practitioners on campus or dissident voices on campus and make them feel safe and welcome at their universities. You know, I think there was such a knee jerk negative reaction by most students as soon as the Chinese international students accused us of racism and offensive political propaganda that very few, if any, actually took the time to watch the film, you know, analyze the situation and understand the event context. And by the time some students had come to understand the entire situation and that it really wasn't as simple as what the Chinese international students had said, the damage was already sort of done. And, you know, so many Falun Gong practitioners on campus were already hurt by everything said and done and sort of felt not safe expressing themselves. And I just think in overall, we felt very unsupported as a minority group on campus through this process. And I think partially this could just be because most universities and university administrations are just not prepared for something like this, that when it does happen, they're not really sure how to react. And then they err on the side of, you know, what they think is caution to avoid, avoid potentially digging a deeper hole and then end up not saying anything. But in reality, I think this just further discourages marginalized groups from feeling like they have a place on campus and then they can openly express themselves without fear of retaliation. Um, in this specific experience of mine, you know, no administrators reached out first to our club directly to offer any support or opportunities to join the conversation. I even reached out to a contact at the university chaplain's office to sort of make them aware of the situation and ask for further assistance. And I didn't receive a response until about a month after all of these conversations had ended. Like this whole thing was a month long process. It was a month before I received a response um, that I had asked for. And then it was only then that I even found out that, you know, representatives from the chaplain's office had been aware of the situation and they had been discussing the situation with other parties involved or other administration. But again, Falun Dafa club members were not brought into these conversations and were not directly offered any resources or support. So the Falun Dafa Club did publish its own letter to attempt to join the dialogue and express concern over the way that this event was misrepresented, um, to which it did not receive any responses from students or administrators. And again, I think the unsatisfactory way that this was handled might just be because universities are unprepared to deal with these situations. They really don't know what to say and worry that you know anything that they do say might come back to bite them, so they just don't say anything. But to me, that's not really doing enough to protect free expression on campus. You know, universities should be proactive about making sure that Falun Gong practitioners or anyone really, any dissident voices, they're not feeling isolated, victimized, or that they need to self-censor on campus just to feel safe and welcome. Um, and I know that what happened to us at Penn was, um, you know, just one of many similar situations and possibly on the less severe side, you know, that is faced by Falun Gong practitioners or dissident voices on university campuses. So overall, I just think that there's still a, a lot much that a lot much more that can be done by universities to improve in this aspect. Thank you.